Mister, we're in the middle of recording. Make up your mind on lap. I can't lean back. I'm sorry. Oh, this is your ploy. No, it's a framing device. Morning. 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 Tentacle Quill here. <sighs> Tentacle Quill, another episode. Yes. Pardon our madness. We're deep in the middle of the Kickstarter. Please back. Really means the world to us. Okay. Dark Forest. The Dark Forest. Mm. So this is the second book in the... In the Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem trilogy. Uh, trilogy. It's got a different name that I forget right now. We just read it. We just finished it, both of us. Mm. And it quite... It took a lot longer than I expected. It took a while longer, yes. Mm. But it was still a very interesting read. Mister, we're in the middle of recording. <laughs> Make up your mind on that. I can't lean back. I'm sorry. Oh, this is your ploy. No, it's a framing device. I, I didn't enjoy this book as much as the first. I mean, yes. obviously the first was very, I thought, very uh, part mm -hmm. of it. So it's, it's mm -hmm. harder to have a book be mm -hmm. as significant as the first. Book. Yes. But having said that, I think, well, so when you write a trilogy, mm -hmm. typically the second book is one of the darkest books yes. um, in the trilogy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was, it was quite a dark book. Before we get into topics, what was your overall vibe on the book? For me, it had a very different vibe from the first one. Mm. It just felt like it was written by a wholly different author, almost, who was just coming into it. But I think that also has to do with the fact that this one had a different translator. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that later. The premise as well is this one's got the prisoner's dilemma as the premise. Yeah, we're going to try to talk mostly spoiler free. Mm -hmm. But the book opens with the book opens with the lead female science character, mm -hmm. Edogre, and mm -hmm. she's talking to the titular character of this mm -hmm. book, giving him the basics, basic axioms of cosmic sociology. Yes. That's sort of the opener. And at mm -hmm. the same time, an ant with a limited perception mm -hmm. is exploring the grave. There is, without any spoilers, a bookend to that scene because that's how yes. it opens and how it closes. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, without getting deep into spoilers, mm -hmm. the sort of core problem of this book is probably mm -hmm. easiest expressed as the prisoner dilemma. Yes. So, yeah, where did you first come across prisoner's dilemma? Like the pure form? Yeah, probably. It's one of those things that get used a lot in game shows. It gets mm, used mm. in cop shows even. Yeah, there's tons of different forms. Mm -hmm. But the basic form mm -hmm. is, here's a reward. Mm -hmm. Without communication, we have to decide whether to do a good action or a bad action. Yes. If we both do a good action, we split mm -hmm. the reward. Yes. If we both do a bad action, neither no. of us gets anything. But... If one of us does the good action and one of us does the bad action, the person who does the bad action gets the reward. It's about... Trust, um, basically. Competition, collaboration, mm -hmm. trust. Mm -hmm. There's some really interesting studies in game theory about whether mm -hmm. or not it's possible. The other thing I want to say when you read this book mm -hmm. is in the first book, there is a bunch of stuff that is presented as science theory, which is complete bollocks. Mm. So there is this, in the first book, there's this concept of contact as symbology, and it mm. talks about work from the Rand Corporation. Mm -hmm. That work doesn't exist. It's total bunk. Yeah. The author is very familiar with the hard sciences, mm. seems more willing to be a bit looser with yeah. the soft sciences, and Definitely. doesn't respect them as much. But Prisoner Dilemma really does feel like the core of this book. Yes, definitely. Well... That kind of might be going into spoiler territory. Okay, I think we really need to talk about spoilers. But mm -hmm. let's get some spoiler-free stuff out the way first. Yes. So if you haven't read this book, you can make yeah. more decisions about it. Mm -hmm. The different translator thing, that's a yes. really interesting... it's really interesting how that so affects the feel of the book. So book one and three have the same translator, but book yep. two has a different translator. Yes. Yeah, I it, noticed it. I noticed it as well. I don't know why, because... As a translator, the person would have definitely had like a list of this is how the, the these words were translated mm. before. Things like, I don't know, uh, the race name, that kind of thing. But it just had a really different feel. It, it, al it mm. almost felt like it was a different writer. And I think that is purely down to translator. I, I, 
I don't know if it's purely down to translator. Mm -hmm. I'd say maybe it's 80% down to translator. Mm -hmm. There was definitely a situation there where mm -hmm. I know in the afterword of the first book, mm -hmm. the translator spoke about making sort of cultural, so sort of narrative mm. devices that are very common in Asian literature, which yes. are less common in Western literature, yes. and adapting some of those. And it's, the first book, it feels like the translator did quite a bit of heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how much heavy lifting or not they mm -hmm. did in the second book. Again, I don't know, haven't seen the original text. But mm. I'm thinking about particularly mm. the conversation t right towards the start of the book between yes. the old men and escapism. Yes. About the cosmic sociology. No, no. Remember, there is this narrative device that travels through the book where there's these ah, like, yes, common, yes. ordinary bloke yep. and they talk yes, about... Yes, those guys. I yeah. love those guys. I feel, because mm -hmm. I've not seen that much in Western literature, that, mm -hmm. that, that but it still felt quite tropey, so mm -hmm. it feels like an mm -hmm. Asian writing trope. Yes. I don't think those guys' scenes were handled great. Fair. Yeah, it was also less character-focused. Like, there was a less fast and hard cast it felt like because we went back to those three people mm. we went back to the one main character that we have in this story and yeah I think the... that's down to the writer more perhaps because barely any of the characters from the first book are coming back now this has a much bigger scope than the first mm -hmm. book the first Definitely. book is much tighter the second book is at mm -hmm. a global scale mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not just in China mm -hmm. so I think yeah mm -hmm. I think that's down to the author's choices. Right? Last thing before we talk about spoilers, though there are spoiler-related things that we want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Probably the thing that was the hardest for oh, us reading Oh, God, this book. yeah. Female this characters. Written by men. Female characters written by men. Mm. Which can be handled really well, especially when they're not busy sexualizing the women. I mean, the, 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 the basic litmus test. And the thing is, I mm -hmm. really enjoyed the mm -hmm. female characters in the first book. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is, as I said to you, I think they were just written as sexless characters. In the Indeed. sense, there were a few things about them. But they were mostly written from the perspective of writing about a mother. Mm -hmm. Right? True. And I think that's one of the places where straight guys can sometimes write a bit more of a sympathetic mm -hmm. character because they think about their mums. Yeah, um, it was very much like the, de the dead scientist, the mother character, mm. the grandma almost. Whereas in the second, the second book, there's so many sexy lamps. And so yeah. many of the female characters are purely described in relation mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the physical traits when yes. you first hear them. And they don't tend to have much motive in the story. Their actions almost have no impact. Yeah. They might as well have changed it to the character's favourite snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is there is also very late in the book another female character mm. who could have been cool. And I feel like most of her coolness mm. was robbed from her. Literally. Um, in fact, I can't name a single female character in this book who I would describe as a character rather than as a prop. Yeah, basically. Um, it's, it's so sad because... The first book handled female characters mm. much better. Yeah. It had so much interesting stuff. For example, the female villainess being first described as a grandmother, being compassionate, joy, compassionate mm. giving... I mean, it's one yeah. of the reasons mm -hmm. I fucking hated the yeah. Netflix adaptation. Yeah. It just didn't give her that time no. in that, you know, where you f feel sorry for her because she's yes. lost her daughter and she's... She's mm. lost so much and you can almost start to understand why she's acting the way she does. Mm. And giving a bad guy the, the correct motivation, like a motivation that the viewer can be like, okay, this person's bad, but yeah. I understand where they're coming from. That is so hard and so mm -hmm. good at the same time. Yeah, no. So, so it was very disappointing. Yes. And, and there was literally, one of the reasons why it took us so long, mm -hmm. it was literally like a couple of weeks where I just had to put the book down mm. and I just couldn't read it. I just could not read mm. it. There is a section of this book that we mm. literally talked about maybe abandoning the mm -hmm. book halfway through. Yeah. It is rough. Yeah. It's also a bit more pessimistic in tone rather than the optimistic tone of the first book. The pessimism, the pessimism sucked, but it was really the female character thing that made yeah, me throw yeah, out the yeah, fucking yeah. window. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was a combination because it was like... Okay, okay, okay. Oh, now the female character's doing the bad thing. Right. Oh, no, we never saw that coming. Okay, let's, let's, for those of you who haven't crossed the spoiler line, let's, mm -hmm. let's draw that spoiler line for mm -hmm. you so we can talk about some hard stuff. Yes. I think if you read the first book and you've got a bit of energy, go mm -hmm. into the second book. 
Yes. Um, be prepared for a darker book. Be prepared mm. um, for some bad female characters. But yes. overall, I would still say worth a read. Definitely. I will give it a break before I go into the third book. Oh, definitely. But I would love to see how this gets wrapped up. I think there's mm. four books, three written the by the fourth, original. Yeah, the fourth book's like a prologue thing. Yeah, okay. It's not part of the trilogy. Yeah, I don't know if I want to have... Oh, okay. yeah. Nice anyway. line in the sand. Spoilers. So you have been Spoilers. warned. Go off, back our Kickstarter. Here be monsters. Back, you know, do, do all that. Okay, right. Here be monster. So let's talk about the world ending. Yes. Now, so... Obviously, the big narrative thing that some people will have already been spoiled for by mm -hmm. the Netflix show is the concept of the wall faces. Yes, indeed. So the wall faces are a really interesting concept because basically there are these four people who are being given... Well, it's the reason. Mm -hmm. It's the Sophons, right? Yes, Which is exactly. in of itself yeah. kind of terrifying and interesting mm -hmm. in that the entire world is under yeah. global alien surveillance. Yeah. Everything so we do. The concept of them is basically they are given unlimited resources to do whatever they want to do. They just can't write it down. They just can't yeah. make any notes. The idea is everything can be surveilled except mm -hmm. the thoughts in our head. Yes. So let's give these four people complete mm -hmm. power to mm -hmm. fight the aliens. Well, not complete mm -hmm. power. There are minor limits. But the idea is that mm -hmm. they can do crazy plans without explaining themselves mm -hmm. because it's up here. It's all in their head. Aliens don't see it. Indeed. So basically it even becomes a trope of like, oh, it's a wall face thing. It's a really interesting trope. It um, is a really cool trope. and I love how it develops into a societal thing. Uh, it becomes so good as well. Because you see how different characters tackle it differently. One of them becomes a wall facer against their will and basically says, well, give me a nice cottage somewhere and don't even tell me where it is and give me all the food and drink and stuff I want and does stupid things and... They can't even say, oh, he's not doing his job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the key mm -hmm. problem with the wall faces, mm -hmm. that they face, is obviously that isolationism. Yeah, very isolationist. Because, like, you, yeah. can't share, if you can't share your thoughts. You can't be vulnerable with mm -hmm. people. You can't develop... It's very hard to develop true relationships mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that if you're holding back always. And it's also very hard to pass what is a good idea and what isn't when you mm. aren't speaking to people because, basically... You're just drawing a line in your head that goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and... But yeah, all yeah. four wall faces basically come up with plans that destroy humanity. Basically, yes. Um, they're, they're, all, mm -hmm. they're all in that situation. The, mm -hmm. you know, because we passed the spoiler line, major spoilers here, the, the caveat is, well, like one of them wants to blow us all up and the other wants to like basically encode us all to mm -hmm. escape because of defeatism. Yes. And the the other guy was like basically sacrificing Earth to save Earth. Yeah. But then finally, the titular character is like the prisoner dilemma. The main character, yeah. Sorry, the main character. I don't know why I keep saying the word titular. <laughs> I want to say Teddy. But yeah. So the the main character is basically yes. prisoner dilemma. Of, mm -hmm. I will send all the other aliens in the universe after you and me if yeah. you don't stop. And it's mm -hmm. like it's a bluff. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also really interesting. I think. The mm. whole fundamental thing is mm -hmm. lack of communication. Of course. You know, because that's what the prisoners' mm -hmm. dilemma is based around. Is yes. The fact that we cannot communicate. Yes, because at this point in um, the book, the aliens aren't communicating with us anymore. No, but also that core principle of, so, like, the, the alien, cosmic sociology. Yes. Of, if yes. I reach out into the universe, I'm going to get killed. Yes. There's basically a whole setup of, like, Two or three principles that the... the so, like, axioms of cosmic yes. sociology. Cosmic sociology. But it, it, it's mm -hmm. fundamentally based on the prisoner's dilemma and limited mm -hmm. resource. It's also sometimes called yes. the grabby alien theory. Yes. But, mm -hmm. you know, again, bringing it back to the wall faces and bringing mm -hmm. it back to the inability mm -hmm. to communicate and stuff. Yeah. If we can't communicate with each other to take the compassionate mm -hmm. act or to take a yes. risk on compassion yeah. is really hard. Indeed. But the thing is that we also know... That there's some really interesting game theory with prison dilemma and what works mm -hmm. out su successful. I don't want to go into all that because that's a big tangent. Exactly. But I really love how mm -hmm. at the end of the book, mm -hmm. the alien from book one yes, it's comes him. in and it's like, while most of Trisolan doesn't feel love, mm -hmm. there are some of us who occasionally do. Mm. And... That's the guy from the first book who effectively yes. tried to save Earth. And it's sort of an indication that his theory was correct. 
Yes. So, yeah, I find that there is a really interesting core positive message yes. in there. Very you much. have to slog through so much darkness in the book. Indeed. It, it really just comes at the end, but it comes at you good. It, it, I mm. found it really made it worth it for me, the yeah. ending, because the, the ending was really good. Solid. It was. But then, like, as you say, you go through the time jump, you mm -hmm. go through humanity, sort of pits yep. of despair and mm -hmm. everything. And, and, yeah, the whole villa mm -hmm. scene. Yes. Where he's basically... Oh, God. Loving a lamp. It's just that that whole bit was all like, how the fuck? But even before the villa scene, before he's made a wall facer, when there's the whole bit about him like losing his oh, ex girlfriend because yes. yes. he falls in love with an imaginary woman. Oh god! It's like, oh. And then the the one night stand that gets run over, and it's like the first attack on his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to casually oh. murder this woman to introduce stakes. Really rough to read. I think it's just, I wonder if it's going to pull on that way in the next book, because the next book is, again, translated by the same person. Yeah. So I wonder if that restores the feel a little bit. Okay. We've been quite negative, but we yes. did walk away with yes. positive stuff. We did. What was the stuff you really enjoyed? We both loved the ending. I mean, the end mm -hmm. at the start and the end, the great yes. scenes. Oh, both. my God. It was Mwah, so, so beautiful. Good. But what, what is the stuff that really hit you? The stuff that I really enjoyed at first was the the jump in time and seeing like how humanity is evolved. Mm. I love a good time jump. I love a good time jump where another character that we know previously can see what's changed about their world, can mm. make a comparison because it's just, it's the seven Eves thing all over again, you know? It's really mm. nice to see where this has gone. And there was so much cool technology and yeah, that, that one I really loved. So the time jump is your favorite sort of narrative device. Mm -hmm. I found the the story mm -hmm. with the story with mm -hmm. the military character, the navy yeah. guy who turns into the space force guy, mm -hmm. and his whole thing, like the scene where mm. he makes the meteor bu bullets. Oh God, yeah, that no, was. No, I loved that. That was so. That was good. That's what I'm saying. Oh. That was so smart. Yeah, and the best part was mm -hmm. when the ETO were oh, meeting, yes. and they're like, "We we saw them, we saw them do all of this shit, but we wouldn't. We don't quite believe it." It's yeah. Like, it was really it was really good and really interesting. Yeah, that um, was a really tense scene because there was a lot of like it was almost very realistic in that one he had to source it all. Secondly, he basically waited and had to like not get blinded with the sun. Scene. Yes. It was a really like, solid space scene. It was also space as mundane, which is a great thing always. But even in the late stage of the book mm -hmm. where we talk about space battles mm. and stuff, they do such a good job mm -hmm. of establishing mm -hmm. like mm. how space works mm -hmm. but it's also the little things like oh we're taking group shot in space let's make sure that the sun is behind us so we can all take our visors down that kind of thing it's <laughs> really brilliantly done it's so well thought through mm. as well I, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun with the space and the space mm -hmm. panels and yes. when the ship gets away and... oh yeah no, it, it was really cool. And, like, there were a few very cool devices, like how the sp ships accelerate with the deep immersion kind of mm -hmm. thing. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Mm. But, yeah, this was this was a heavy book, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need to do another Dresden or something. Yes. We need to do something dumb. This book <laughs> yes. was so good, though. It, it was, was good. really good. I'd like a, you know what? I'd really like to read something by a female author. Now. Yes. Or a queer author. We can do R.F. Quang's Yellow Face. Ooh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. that was recommended. Yeah. But overall, mm -hmm. I would strongly recommend. Book. Well, not strongly. I would softly recommend. <laughs> softly recommend. If you're already this deep in the series, go read it. If you've read the uh, first not book. Not necessarily. I think, I think you can walk away from the first book and be satisfied in that mm. sense. There's really... I'll also say it does not feel... Like mm -hmm. the first book was written as the opener of a trilogy. Mm. It feels like the first book was written as a book. And yes. this book turns it into a trilogy. Yes. Yes, that is fair. But that's a whole other topic, which yes. we keep meaning to talk about at some point. Yes. I, do you know we might just have to use Star Wars? We might have to use Star Wars. Oh, God. Um, I'll need some caffeine. <laughs>
I thank okay. you so much for tuning in again. Take care. Take care. Don't forget the Kickstarter is still live for a few more weeks. I know we constantly mention it, but it's it's tough out there. And yep. we really do appreciate the support on that. Vertex. Bye-bye. Okay. No cats were harmed in the making of this movie.